Hillsong Church founder Brian Houston just resigned after the church performed an internal investigation and found him guilty of misconduct. Of course, this is just the latest of many allegations that Hillsong has been going through in the recent years, including the moral failure of Carl Lentz, who was widely understood and known as the former pastor of Justin Bieber. So let's talk about what his church publicly revealed that was so damaging that it caused him to retire, what my thoughts are on this whole situation, and also how this situation impacts the way that all of us view Christianity. And yes, that includes you too. Let's get into it. Now, just so we're all on the same page about what happened, this article reports the situation this way. Brian Houston, a founder of the Australian-based megachurch Hillsong, has resigned after an internal investigation by its board found that he had breached the church's code of conduct at least twice over the past decade by behaving inappropriately toward two people. Houston's resignation was announced by Hillsong Church in a statement Wednesday posted to his website. We understand that there will be much emotion at this news, and we all share these feelings. Hillsong said in part, it added, we acknowledge that change is needed. We have committed to an independent review of our governance structure and process, understanding that this is a time of humble reflection and we are committed to doing what is necessary to ensure God is honored and our eyes are fixed on Jesus. The article goes on to say that in a recent internal probe, the church revealed last week that it had been dealing with two complaints made against Pastor Brian over the last 10 years. The first issue was approximately a decade ago and involved inappropriate text messages from Pastor Brian to a member staff, which subsequently resulted in the staff member resigning. Hillsong said that an investigation revealed that Houston had been under the influence of sleeping tablets at the time, upon which he developed a dependence. The second complaint was received in 2019. Hillsong said, Following an in-depth investigation, it was found that Pastor Brian became disoriented after a session at the Hillsong Conference following the consumption of anti-anxiety medication beyond the prescribed dose mixed with alcohol. The statement said, this resulted in him knocking on the door of a hotel room that was not his, entering this room and spending time with the female occupant. Hillsong went on to state that an investigation found that important elements of the complaint were sustained and the conduct was of serious concern. Ultimately, the board found that Brian had breached the Hillsong pastor's code of conduct. We also acknowledge that whatever the circumstances at the time, the person did not deserve to be placed in the situation she found herself in by Pastor Brian. And by the way, it should be added that Brian claims that nothing sexual happened in the hotel room and the investigation was unable to verify if something sexual happened one way or the other. Now, in recent years, people have had all kinds of strong feelings about Hillsong, some positive and some negative. So when the news came out, of course, those who are part of Hillsong or like their teaching, they were grieved by the situation. And some other Christians who don't have been happy about it and saw it as exposing the fact that they believe that Hillsong is a false and a heretical church. Now, to be clear, I have instincts just like everyone else. If I disagree with or I don't like someone who happens to get caught in a moral failure, I've noticed that I too might have an instinctual feeling of happiness in seeing them fail. I start to feel validated or vindicated in some way, but the only way that that can happen is if I allow myself to start to see all of the ways in which I'm nothing like that person and how I would never do anything similar to what they did. So without even thinking about it, I can look at something as grievous as them being exposed for some moral failure and still find a way to let it make me feel better about myself or my views. I can feel better because at some level, I can compare myself to them. This sort of thing is always happening at a subconscious level because instinctively, we know that if we can stress the differences between us and them, then we can avoid seeing any of the similarities that we might have with them, and we feel validated because of that. But it took me some time to realize that there actually are similarities between me and not only the worst of sinners, but also these leaders who've committed the worst of moral failures. The thing that drives people to commit horrible crimes is the same thing that drives these leaders to stumble. And it's also the same thing that causes me to feel a sense of validation when I see someone that I don't like have a moral failure. This thing that I'm talking about is the same thing that's inside all of us. This is where we find those similarities that we wanna avoid seeing. As Paul said, Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature, a slave to the law of sin. 
So what Paul's saying here is that there's this conflict between obeying God and these animal instincts of the flesh that's a slave to sin. Of course, this doesn't excuse or condone any immoral actions or living, but what it does mean is that whenever we see anyone stumble, although we should be disgusted by the damage that their sinful actions have caused, we should also allow the gospel to bring us back to the reality of the situation. The gospel tells us that although we like to think of ourselves as more moral than other people that we see doing immoral things out there, the reality is not a single one of us has salvation because of how good we are in comparison to the worst person out there who might not have salvation. We aren't saved because of how good we are or because of the moral lives that we live, but instead we're saved because of how good Jesus is and because of the moral life that he lived. It's only because he offered the moral life that he lived as a substitute for our own that our salvation can be judged by his moral life if we accept his free gift of salvation. So if we aren't saved by realizing how good we are, but instead realizing how good we aren't, then we have to ask ourselves, how could we possibly possibly look down on someone else for their moral failings and feel a sense of superiority because of it when we ourselves couldn't even obtain salvation ourselves and we were so immoral that we had to have Christ die for us in our place. The more that we internalize the gospel, the more that we realize that we simply can't. So in reality, all of us should actually be humbled when we see these leaders fail because no matter how confident that we might be in our own moral ability, none of us are so moral that we're outside of the realm of being humbled by our sin. We're like Peter who said that he would never deny Jesus and he meant it. He was so confident in his own ability to be faithful that he told Jesus to his face that he would never deny him. But not too long later, we learned that he denied Jesus three times before he even realized what happened. And if it can happen to Peter, it can happen to any one of us. And again, this doesn't mean that we shouldn't be critical of the negative impact that someone else's sin has had on others, but it does mean that we shouldn't be looking at someone else's moral failings from a place of superiority as if we're not capable of doing the same thing, if not in our actions, in our hearts. Now, so much more can be said about this, but we'll have to save it for another time. And in the meantime, YouTube's algorithm thinks that you'll like this video the most. So let's see if they're right. And the next time you find yourself stressing the differences between you and the worst of sinners, rather than stressing the similarities, what are you going to say? What do you mean?